Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I am bringing you some book recommendations for the spooky season. If you are someone that likes to theme your reading around kind of what time of year it is, what kind of celebrations are going on, then hopefully there are some recommendations in this list for you. I'm going to be theming some of my reading around September and October around spooky books, around kind of witchy books, because I really love witchy books and there are definitely quite a few of those in these recommendations. If you want to see what I'm thinking about reading during the spooky season, I will leave that video linked so you can check it out after you watch this one. Here are my recommendations, starting with Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. Now the sequel to this book is one that I'm hoping to read myself over spooky season but I definitely wanted to give the first book in this series another shout out. I have the gorgeous Waterstones special edition that has these yellow sprayed edges. I'm sure a lot of you have already read this one but in case you haven't I want to add to the many recommendations that there are for this book. So this is about HMRC, Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which are a government department that aid the government in any kind of dealings with the supernatural. So it's based in the UK and they're also tasked with upholding the tradition of witchcraft that goes all the way back to Anne Boleyn. HMRC is a place for women in this coven to really harness their talents but also have the protection that the sisterhood gives them. We're following a lot of different witches in this coven and there's definitely lots of elements to this book that have like fun girly vibes. Like there's a lot of kind of like Spice Girls references and that kind of thing. The cause of tension in this book comes from when a powerful extreme extremely powerful witch is discovered but this witch is trans, she is a trans woman, trans witch, and that causes a huge amount of friction and disagreement and conflict within the coven as people feel differently about including a trans witch in the coven. So the book is definitely engaging with those social and political issues and I think it definitely sort of is inspired by a lot of critique towards an author of another very famous witching and wizarding book series. It's also really pacey and action packed in a way that it is dealing with these, a book that is dealing with these kind of big powers would be, but it has those kind of social and political themes underneath it and also has those like fun girly vibes that I mentioned as well. If you're someone like me who's not like hugely into fantasy, I think this is a like kind of gateway into the genre or like has elements of that genre that is really fun if you're someone that doesn't read fantasy all of the time. I also really want to recommend a short story collection. So this is Hag, Forgotten Folk Tales Retold. This is a collection of short stories or an anthology of short stories from lots of different writers. Some of those writers I had read from before and I knew I liked them and some of the authors included in this were new to me. These short stories are reimaginings of old folk tales centered around the idea of the hag, of this kind of old witch woman. There's a real breadth of location covered across the UK and Ireland. So some of the stories are set in Ireland, some in England, Wales, and Scotland, taking the folklore of each of those places and reimagining them for a modern 21st century audience and also bringing some kind of like feminist aspects to them as well. I also just think this is one of the most gorgeous books that I have. Like I love the cover design of this. I just think it is so gorgeous. If you're someone who's into their classics, then there are of course a lot of classic ghost stories that you could go towards in Halloween. I haven't read loads of those. I'm hoping that I've read some of them over this spooky season. Instead, I'm going to recommend to you some classic sci-fi. So here I have The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. This is the H.G. Wells book that I have read most recently, so I will leave um, my wrap-up where I talk about this book if you want to hear extended thoughts on this. I actually just want to recommend H.G. Wells overall. Like I've read a few of their books and it's really great to have a shorter classic that you can dip into. I'd say all of his books are around like 150 to 200 pages. They're really plot driven. They are classic sci-fi but they have very kind of creepy elements to them. And what I love about reading classic sci-fi is kind of putting them in their historical context and it being a reflection of what people were fearful at that time in history. So I would recommend The Island of Dr. Moreau but I would also recommend The Invisible Man and War of the Worlds as well. I have some young adult recommendations as well. So this is The Other Ones by Fran Hart, which I read last Halloween. This is about a pair of siblings who live in a haunted house and the friendships and romantic relationships that they have as well. There is queer representation in this book, which is absolutely fantastic as well. This group of friends are just like really charming, really lovable. This book has kind of, it's not like scary. It's definitely more like a spoopy as they try and figure out what exactly is going on with the haunting elements. They're a group of misfits that find real comfort in each other. And yeah, this definitely falls into the kind of wholesome, spoopy Halloween rather than actually scary Halloween.
Halloween. And in the same vein, I would also really like to recommend Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. This is a graphic novel about two friends and maybe more who every autumn have worked together on a pumpkin patch. And it just has so many like wholesome Halloweeny feels. Sticking with a young adult, I would really like to recommend two series by Irish authors. So the first of those is by Deirdre Sullivan. The series begins with perfectly preventable deaths. I only have the second book here, Precious Catastrophe. But this is about Caitlin and Maddie who are twin sisters. And in the first book, they move to a new place in Ireland, are trying to navigate their new lives there. The sisters are very different. And the longer they spend in this town of Ballyfran, the more they begin to realize that there is something very unusual going on. One of the sisters is beginning to realize that she has powers that she hasn't yet begun to understand. And the other sister is finding herself in a very dangerous toxic relationship that has grave danger to it. I feel like Irish authors just do like witchy so well. I'd also really like to recommend Caroline O'Donoghue's young adult series. So it begins with all our heading gifts and then the second book is The Gifts That Bind Us. There's also the third book, Every Gift A Curse. So these are books that are inspired by tarot. Our main character is Maeve and in the first book she acquires this tarot deck and develops a real talent for giving people readings. But as the story goes on, it becomes clear that her tarot readings are more powerful than she first anticipated. And as the series progresses, she gets deeper and deeper into realizing the extent and the impact of her powers. There's also really fantastic queer representation in this. There is in this series as well, actually. And like Her Majesty's Royal Coven, it is also engaging with kind of social and political issues and particularly social and political issues in Ireland as well. Caroline O'Donoghue is one of my favorite authors. I love her adult fiction. I love her YA series. Big recommendation for all our hidden gifts. I'd also really like to recommend Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. There's also brilliant queer representation in this as well. Our main character, Yadriel, is a trans boy and the men in his society have magical powers, but he is kind of excluded from that and he feels the need to really prove himself to gain acceptance in his family. He decides that the way he's going to do this is to summon the ghost of his cousin, but it doesn't go to plan. He accidentally summons the ghost of his school's resident bad boy. And things get quite complicated from there. I thought the magic system in this was really fantastic. It's really influenced and inspired by the author's Latinx background. And that was a representation of kind of magic that I'd never read about before. I read this so quickly, which is really unusual for me with a book that has fantasy elements to it. And finally, I want to recommend a children's book. So this is a book that is published by the place that I work. And that is Valentine Crow and Mr. Death by Jenny Spangler. This is definitely one of the ones that falls into like spoopy rather than scary. So our main character is Valentine Crow, and he and his best friend Philomena are leaving their children's home in order to become apprentices. But actually an admin error means that Valentine Crow is assigned to Mr. Death, who is the Grim Reaper, rather than Mr. Darth, who was like a watch mender. And Valentine Crow has to be an apprentice to Mr. Death, who is just such a really like fun character. And it's also kind of like, we think of the Grim Reaper as this really scary figure. And he's just like a guy that's trying to do his job. So we are following all of the kind of antics that happen to Valentine Crow, but also the very like serious decisions that he is faced with when his best friend appears on the list of souls that he needs to read. This is super fun and definitely hits the mark if you are someone that doesn't want to be scared, but you just want kind of those spooky Halloween vibes. So there we have it. They are my spooky season recommendations recommendations. Have you read any of these books already? What did you think of them? Do you have any spooky recommendations for me? Leave them down in the comments. In my last spooky season video where I was telling you about the books that I wanted to read, I told you to leave a pumpkin emoji to let me know that you are here. But this time I want you to leave me the ghost emoji. So if you want to leave a comment but you don't have anything in particular to say, just leave me a little ghost. I hope you guys are doing well and I'll speak to you in my next video.